Welcome to my video series, The Netherlands in a Week, where I have a goal of getting to know different parts of the Netherlands as best as possible within seven days. This is day three, where I leave Groningen to go experience an open air museum in Arnhem, hear some really great stories, and also get to know the city a little bit better while also visiting a surprise city at the end. Hope you enjoy. Wake up, wake up, wake up, everybody. It is time for day three. I'm kind of in a rush. Um, I would say good morning, but I've actually been up since about five or so this morning. It's currently 8.20 or so. Um, but yeah, I just woke up in the middle of the night, couldn't sleep, so I just started editing the video from day two. I'm almost pretty much done with that. Um, and I'm gonna finish on the train because I need to hurry up and leave to go to Arnhem. All right, everybody, I'm packed. Got the shorts on today. You know, walking the sneakers and everything. And it's time to get ready to go to Arnhem. I'm really looking forward to this day. Uh, a lot of people were definitely saying Arnhem is a place you have to go to. Um, they have this open museum outdoor, uh, it's called like open air museum. Um, but they also have like this national park that's nearby. So I'm really excited to, to see this and I uh, hope we get some good video, like a good experience and I hope you guys enjoy it as well. Let's go. All right, saying goodbye to another Airbnb. Ciao. Okay, I just made the worst mistake ever. I was checking out my Airbnb. I dropped off my keys. When I walked outside, I felt like, oh, that looks like it's missing. And you know what? There was my camera sitting right there. Now I need to wait for someone to come and open this door and I have no idea when that's gonna happen. Crap, now it's gonna send me behind on my church. All right, I got my camera back, but now unfortunately I'm trying to run for the train. Hopefully I make it, let's see. Yeah, there was no way I was making that. I was out of my mind. Ah, gotta wait for the next one now. All right, so since I missed my train, that means I have a little more time. Just grab some food here at the station. I used to always eat these wraps when I first moved out here. Except for this Psalm one. That was my go-to. All right, so this is what we're gonna go with. This here, and then two of these little protein bars. All right, I'm on this train now. That departs in about 20 minutes. Uh, it's going from Groningen to Zwolle, and then from Zwolle to Arnhem. So I'm just gonna chill here, have my breakfast, and yeah, enjoy the ride. <laughs> All right, now I am in Arnhem. Let's go, I'm about to head over to that museum. Oh, actually I booked the Airbnb now as well, but it's not in Arnhem, I booked the Airbnb and this small little city that I saw was nearby. I got an Airbnb in Dalvin, D-U-I-V-E-N. Yeah, the hotels and Airbnbs were expensive here in Arno, but I also thought it'd be cute to just kind of go to a little small city nearby and just stay there instead. So yeah, that's what we're gonna do. Something that's standing out to me right now on these buses is that there's actually uphill out here. Anyone that knows the Netherlands and knows that the Netherlands is a flat country. So <laughs> uphill is not a big thing, but I'm really seeing some uphill right now. It's pretty crazy. Also, like the homes kind of getting like an east coast of the U.S. vibe right now out here. It's really, really interesting. All right, just got off the bus. I see there's a zoo here as well. That would also be fun to go to, but... I am choosing the open air zoo. If I have time for the zoo, then maybe I'll do the zoo as well, but I don't think I'll have time. Next time, next time, or no. Any viewers out there not from Netherlands watching this, you're probably thinking like, whoa, where is this guy? Because <laughs> this terrain looks so different from the rest of my videos. You know, usually kind of just being like a city type area out here or just being around a canal or something, but this is really just like, I like I'm about to be in a jungle or something. <laughs> Okay, so here's it. Yeah, wilt u wel de grond mee? Uh, alsjeblieft. Dank u wel. Yeah, dank u wel. All right, we're walking in. All right, so I made it inside the museum. I'm really excited to explore out here. Um, so this actually, this year, they have a theme here at the museum and the theme is freedom. 
It's like, what is freedom to you? And freedom in, you know, different sorts. They explain it with, you know, it talks about freedom from, oh, freedom from COVID rules or freedom to just, you know, be who you want to be or, you know, freedom in terms of the history of, like, you know, with slavery and all that. and But just their freedom in all different ways of life. And uh, I got that different things, exhibits and all that dedicated to that. So I'm really curious to explore that and see what they got to say. What do here? Hi, welcome in the Dutch Open Air Museum. Dutch Open Air Museum in, all, in Arnhem, in the Netherlands. 110 acres of typical Dutch historical farms and other kinds of buildings. It was uh, erected in 1912 um, as an answer to the Industrial Revolution that started in the Netherlands. It started later here in this country than in the countries uh, around us and the founders saw that the rural areas were collapsing uh, because people left for the cities to work in the factories and by his opinion it was a shame that so much history of Dutch farming uh, that started way before the Roman, uh, Romans invaded uh, this country would disappear. This year in our museum we have a team every year we have another team and this year it is freedom everywhere in the museum you can um, feel think talk about freedom um, what it means to you compared to how people in the old days uh, experienced freedom This is a farmhouse. They also mention here on this sign about this phrase that Dutch use. Uh, where is it? Met the door and house fallen. An expression uh, usually means like usually meaning getting straight to the point. And they're saying it stems from the fact that before when you walk in, right when you walk in, you're like bam, automatically hit with like all this furniture and like really just being like right inside the house so it's like yeah the connection <laughs> getting straight to the point if that makes sense i feel like it's been a theme about like a lot of my videos but i really feel like i'm going back in time out here like it's it's crazy <laughs> oh give me the noise give me the noise i know you want to i know you want to yell come on there we go. <laughs> of course, got to have the typical Dutch windmills in the background. <laughs> we got some pulpitos being made over here. As you guys know, I had them for the first time a few weeks ago. Super, super good. <laughs> Hello. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it more like, oh, like, 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 it's difficult, like, not to burn them. Um, well, it's actually not that difficult. It no? just takes um, a lot of practice and I can uh, imagine. Yeah, paying attention. Yeah, because it seems like they cook very, very fast, you know? Yeah, there's like so many of them you do at once. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it does take uh, some level of speed. Gotcha. Yeah, yeah but practice makes uh, perfect. Yeah, that's low. We're eating on oak block, oak meat. Often too. That's all? Often yeah. too? <laughs> often too. Who ate you? Uh, junior. Oh, Sam, look at the music. We zijn, dit is de smederij, de Voorts, om het ja, maar zo in het Engels dan ja, te zeggen. En ja, wij maken hier eigenlijk alles wat voor het museum nodig is. Als het maar van ijzer is en dat het in het vuur kan. En dat maken we. En verder maken we leuke kleine presentjes voor de winkel die dan verkocht kunnen worden om een beetje onze prijzen van het ijzer een beetje te, te, terug te kunnen krijgen. 
Nou, dat is eigenlijk wat wij hier hoofdzakelijk doen. Leuk. Is er ergens een, een deur kapot met een nieuw scanier of met, dat er een nieuw scanier moet? Nou, dan maken we dat. Wow. En, en, en is er een hekkenwerk kapot, dan maken we het hekwerk. Is er, ja, alles wat kapot is en het is van ijzer, wordt het door de smid gerepareerd. Wauw, en hoe lang heb je dit gedaan? Oh, dit doe ik al zo heel lang. Ik was uh, al, als kind, liep ik al bij opa in de smederij. Serieus? Ja. Wauw, superleuk. Dank je wel, meneer. Oké, okay, graag. Uh, to all the people that suggested I come here, huge, huge thanks. Uh, I'm really having a great time. This is really interesting to me. To be honest, I'm typically not the biggest museum person, because I think a lot of times museums just have, like, art pieces that are, you know, usually, like, church uh you know paintings and all that kind of stuff or religious paintings i should say and yeah i feel like once you see one you kind of feel like you've seen them all or just like self-portraits of people etc um but this is really really interesting it's like really just like these real pieces from back in the day that really makes you feel like you're there you know for example right now i'm in this little section that's dedicated to like the history of the dutch post and uh, transportation system and you're just seeing like all these real like artifacts here i don't know if artifacts is the best word to use but you know what i mean like real pieces that just really give you a great idea of like how life was in these different moments uh, and yeah, I just find it super interesting, it, it's really cool. It's a really beautiful garden here. Dus hoe hebben we hier vandaag? Ja, ik ben Joyce. Oh, Joyce. En oh, Joyce. Uh, ik vertel Anansi verhalen. Kennen ja. jullie Anansi? Anansi de spin? Kijk, hij ligt lekker op mij te wachten. Hè? <laughs> Dat is mijn vriend Anansi. <laughs> en uh, een gezegde van Anansi: wie niet sterk is, moet slim zijn. Net als Anansi. <laughs> de verhalen van Anansi zijn meegereisd in de hoofden van de slaafgemaakte. En die verhalen zijn terechtgekomen, want die slaven zijn op reis gegaan, die zijn terechtgekomen in Brazilië, Suriname, de Antillen, een stukje um, Amerika. En die verhalen zijn terug aan het komen. He. Nou, de laatste film die we aan toegevoegd hebben, dat gaat over Anto de Kom. We hebben een expositie in de Canon. Hebt u dat al gezien? Ja, dat zijn gezien? Ja. Hebt u ook onder de lessen naar gekeken naar de manuscripten van uh, Anton de Kom? Uh, nee, zo. Ja, we hebben zo'n zo brief. Uh, zo vrij zijn we niet. Oh, je moest dan net kijken, dat zijn de mooie stukjes. Ja. Uh, um, Anton de Kom, ze hebben manus 65 manuscripten van Anton de Kom gevonden. Yeah. En uh, in die manuscript zat een verhaal die ik hier ook onder de um, uh, Anansiboom vertel. Waarom was hij een schrijver had een goede pen? Een van zijn uh, gezegden is, alleen met solidariteit kunnen we verenigen tot een menswaardig bestaan. Een hele goede schrijver was hij. Maar hij was ook een verbinder. Hè? Um, als je die ornament ook gezien hebt, vraagt hij wat betekent die ornament. Um, bij, uh, na, uh, in juli 1863, toen waren de slaafgemaakten waren vrij. Kitty Kotti brengt de ketting. Ja, ze hoefden niet meer te werken, alhoewel ze tien jaar verder hebben gewerkt. Maar er waren geen lui mensen. Ze, hebben, ze waren nooit betaald, ze hadden nooit geld gekregen, dus ze wilden niet gaan werken. Dus ze moesten dan ergens anders mensen werven om op de suikerplantage, tabakplantage, katoenplantage, rubbertappers, moeten toch wel mensen zijn om te werken. Ja. Dus wat hebben ze gedaan? Ze zijn dus in de kolonie gaan zoeken. Dus Daardoor is Suriname zo gemuleerd. Je hebt de Javanen, de Hindoestanen, de Chinezen, noem maar. He, die mensen konden heel goed naast elkaar wonen. En die gezichten, maar ze hebben misbruik gemaakt van die mensen. Want het waren mensen die konden lezen en schrijven. Het was tekenen bij het kruisje. Nou ja, dat... Uh, he. En Anton had een hele goede pen, die kon heel goed schrijven. Dus uh, op een bepaald moment had hij dus een... Uh, 
Want hij mocht er nergens meer spreken. Hè? En achter in de tuin, onder de mangelboom, had hij dus zijn bureau opgezet, zijn bedrijf. Alleen, hij had alleen een stoel en een tafel. Hè? Adviesbureau Anton de Kom, hoop en vrede. Ja, en na een paar dagen, drie weken, werd hij toch verbannen vanuit Suriname. Want het was toch een gevaar voor de regering die daar zat. Ja, je mag je hoofd boven de maaiveld steken. En dat is voor Aven Anton de Kom. Ik heb toevallig een boek, die heb ik van iemand te leen gekregen. Een stukje gelezen vandaag, dat hij boeken las waar alleen de Nederlandse versie van de ziel is in stond. Ja, nou, dat is een papier dan zal, ik zal het een, een stukje voorlezen. Dit is een boek, dit is een heel oud boek dat ik van iemand te leen gekregen. En het voorwoord staat het ook in. Wat heb ik ook gebeurd? Voor uitstrevende onderwijs hebben we reeds jaren gelden deze nadelen onderkend. Verschillende pogingen zijn gedaan. Wat is er gebeurd? Deze boek, wat, wat hier in Nederlandse geschiedenis was, dat kregen we ook daar op school. We kenden onze helden niet. We wisten precies wat er in Nederland gebeurt, waar Amsterdam was, Rotterdam. Maar van onze eigen plekje wisten wij niet. En onze helden niet. En we hebben wel, was wij. Bonnie, Likur, Carpata, Tula, Sablika, Dementieva, Wantitelokai. Wantitelokai is een dame die in borst zat, was een slaafgemaakte. Die zij was bord. ontsnapt, want dit een lokaal heet zij. Ja. Zij was ontsnapt en het was de meester boos. Omdat hij zo weer ontsnapt had ze een borst afgehaald. En uh, ja, het was ook een strijder. Kijk, en dat zijn onze helden die nergens geschreven staan. Ja. Dat zijn onze helden. Dus, en daar schreef Anton de Kom wel over. Dus tegenwoordig is het anders, maar in die tijd uh, had je... Nee, maar slavernij, dan weet je niet wat het is. Maar je moet je indenken dat je van jouw uh, gezonde leven, 10 jaar, 15 jaar, mensen worden van 15 jaar in de gevangenis gezet, hun vrijheid ontnomen. Dat is bij een slaaf nu meer ook zo. En je leven tikt maar door. Ja, je leven, je leven wel ontnomen, maar je moest werken, ja, ja. werken, werken. Je had, je had niks te vertellen, niks te zeggen. In de tropen. Ja, ja. je hebt niks te zeggen. Je bent weggerukt aan de ene kant, in een barbelijke toestand op dat boot meegekomen, want ze werden gestapeld. Hmm. Ja. Aan de andere kant, en dan moest je alleen maar werken. Hmm. Wauw, shout out to you Joyce. Uh, you were amazing, your stories were amazing. Uh, the conversation you were having with the other guy was just really interesting for me to hear as well. Uh, you know, for me it's really interesting just in general though, learning about, you know, the history with slavery for people that were not brought to the United States because it's a, it's a different connection that they have with slavery than what we do, you know what I mean? Like, I grew up learning about, you know, African-American experience and kind of just having like that viewpoint of like how things went down, but then you start to learn about these other cultures, you know, Suriname, people in Curacao, people in, yeah, it's just, you know, all, all these different places. Uh, and for me, it's just really cool to hear about. It gives me like more perspective of like how this really really ugly thing that happened in the world impacted people uh, in different ways just kind of like the the ramifications that I had on people to this day you know what i mean and yeah thank you joyce once again for your stories really appreciate it and i hope you guys really found it interesting as well these things really trip me out so much they look so real it's insane
for the food. Gotta run, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on. Let's go, let's go, let's get him. Let's get him. Let's get him. Come on. Come on. Be right there. Be right there. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Got him. That's my workout for the day. Let's go. This is so crazy to, to just even see this, like, this could have been me, just being sold like property. It's insane to think of, it's, it's so crazy. So this exhibit is over Anton de Combe and basically based off with the text, what I'm reading here, you know, he was a activist, um, he opposed colonialism, racism, injustice, he was born in 1898, died in 1945, um, he was, had a nickname for his, from his people in Suriname, he had a nickname of Papa de Combe, um, he's seen as a teacher, united with people, and the Dutch colonial regime and also the Nazis try to silence him because of his beliefs and what he fought for. Uh, I learned about him a little bit early as well from Joyce. She gave me a little bit more information on what he did. So really interesting to look about, or really interesting to learn about, I should say. Uh, definitely I'll look up more of his, his stuff and learn more about him. But okay, I had a great, great time at the museum. I'm gonna give a recap later, but for right now, I'm making a stop here in Arnold Center. Uh, Arnold Central, it's, 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 I can't talk right now, my Dutch and English is getting mixed up. I'm at Arnold Central and I have this Tudemet Hill here, it looks amazing. And I got to finish editing the video from yesterday and upload that so you guys can watch. And after that, I'm going to get on with the day. I'm actually trying to sort out something. So the Airbnb that I got is actually quite a bit further from Arnold Central. Or Central. <laughs> Sorry, I keep mixing my Dutch English. But it's further from Arnold Central than I expected. So I'm trying to see if I can cancel it and then rebook at right here in Arnold Central. Uh, but we'll see if that happens. If not, I gotta just figure something out. All right, it's time for you guys' favorite part of the day. <laughs> MTV Cribs time. This is the third Airbnb that I've had. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, I had one in another little town, but it was just gonna be too much trying to get there from Arnold Central. So I just ended up rebooking to another place here and the other guy was you know, nice enough to just let me cancel. So shout out to you. Uh, but yeah, I'll do a quick little tour. This is just a little room, but yeah, let's see it. Got the bed here, the luggage stuff, everything here, a little table. We're literally like right smack in the city center, so that's really cool. Really, really cool, really cool, really accessible, everything. Little TV here. Kitchen, laptop here, exporting the day two video right now. So laptop is sitting there. And yeah, this is totally the shower. Nothing crazy special, but I think the best part is just the location and the little view that we have out there. So while my video from yesterday is exporting, I must go out and explore a little bit of the central area, go grab a drink and uh, yeah, see what the, see what the town brings. Hey. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. How are you doing? How are you doing? Yeah, yeah. He's on it, though. Another city, another church. This one looks super, super nice. So, this church is called Eusebius Church. This is the largest building in Arnhem. And this church had a lot of damage during the Second World War and uh, was extensively rebuilt. Yes, I just looked it up right now before filming. <laughs> so they have a whole store here dedicated to the United Kingdom. It seems to be called Hartley's. I would assume there has to be some kind of connection with 
the World War II, um, and you know the role that the British had in terms of like liberating Arnhem. I would assume, because I was just reading up about the bridge that's here, uh, the John Frostburg Bridge, and this one is dedicated to John Frost, who I think he was. Let's see. Yeah. He was, he was British, so I think there definitely has to be some kind of connection with the, the British in the war, them having a whole store dedicated to British goods. All right, I had a beer in the little city center of Arnhem real quick. I uh, just sat and you know, caught a little vibe, but I had to hurry up and get back to the Airbnb so I could upload the video from yesterday because it will finish exporting from my laptop. But now I'm gonna go back out. I'm debating. Um, to be honest, it was kind of a little dead here right now in the city, sitting here of Arnhem. And actually when I was like uploading the video, I saw someone comment asking, uh, or I saw a comment on my page asking if I already been in Nijmegen. And actually I took that off my list because you know, it's just been hard trying to like fit in all these different places. But I was looking at it, it was like Nijmegen only takes like 20 minutes to get there uh, with the train from here. So I was like, maybe I'll go to Nijmegen just to check out Nijmegen at night right now. I'm gonna step back outside real quick to see like what the vibe is like and if I should stay here. But maybe I'll go to Nijmegen right now. We'll see what happens next. All right, it's decided. I just asked some people quickly, should I stay here tonight for a drink or go to Nijmegen? They said Nijmegen will be busier. So you know what? F it, we're going to Nijmegen. Let's go. All right, Nijmegen. Let's see what you got. Oh, hope he makes this train. All right, I'm definitely seeing it's more busy. I'm hearing more noise and it's still early. It's only like nine. 50 or so, which out here is really, really early. From what I know, it doesn't really get started until like 12 or 12.30. People turns like nightlife and all that kind of stuff. I'm gonna use my phone right now just to make my life a little easier. I'm gonna keep pulling my camera out, but I would say Nijmegen was definitely the right decision, as you can see. I'm gonna be honest with you guys. I spent a lot of this night just sitting and people watching. And you know, I've just kind of been thinking about like, probably 26 is such a weird age. Like, it's such like a weird in-between like right now it's a it's a Wednesday night, so a lot of people that are just like young college students, you know? And at 26, like you feel definitely like, all right, that's not really like my crowd anymore or anything, you know? But at the same time too, it's like the 30 plus and up crowd. I mean, I'm, I'm someone that's always been like able to just casually chill with like people over me. So it's fine for the most part, but still it's like you recognize like I'm not all the way there with you guys either, you know? And so, I don't know, it's like, Mid 20s is just like some weird in between the age or so. I, I don't know. Random thoughts from Sam at uh, what time is it? 10:53 at night here in Nijmegen. All right, that's it for my time here in Nijmegen. Still really early. It's only uh, let's see, 11:32, which I know for time nightlife out here, I should say, it's just not even beginning yet. But the trains only run for so long, I'm not trying to get trapped out here at night making, so I'm gonna make it back home. But uh, yeah, no, I'm really happy I did this, so it's, uh, I don't know, for me it's really interesting. Between here and uh, being in Groningen last night, it's like really seeing the college atmosphere here in the Netherlands. And the way, reason I say it's interesting is because like in Amsterdam, you don't really like see that anywhere, at least from what I've seen. It's not like, you know, obviously you have like the party areas or whatever, but like, people in Amsterdam that are, that are like out partying are also people that like, you know, live there. And it's also, just being frank, like not really affordable for students. So it's not just like students that are out in the party life, you know what I mean? But I feel like here, like in Groningen, or sorry, not here, but like in Nijmegen, here in Nijmegen, but also in Groningen, it's like students are actually like living in the cities. Like my girlfriend told me like they're like renting rooms and everything in the cities. Like it's more doable than what it is in Amsterdam. So it's like more heavily populated by, students and yeah i find it interesting as well because like the vibe although the setup may be different like the vibe itself is like very similar to like college life in the u.s um and it, uh, yeah it's just cool to see like that kind of vibe that kind of atmosphere but just in a different country even though it's like not my thing anymore like as i said earlier like in the video like 
26 is like a weird age, you know, like I, I'm not, I recognize I'm not part of that, like that vibe anymore. But I still like to love to go out, I still love to have a drink, I still like to love to, you know, have a fun party, but it's just kind of a different way, you know, than what an 18 or 19 year old or a 20 year old may like to do. Um, but yeah, overall, good night, happy I experienced this, and now I'm back to Arndham and gonna get started on getting ready for the next day. Hope you guys enjoyed the video today and until tomorrow. Ciao.